2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse number 7, and I'm going to read to verse number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse number 7, and I'm going to read to verse number 10. And it says, And lest I should be exalted above measure, this is because uh you know what? How about we do this? Let's back up. <laughs> I'm going to start at verse number one. All right? Because I want you to follow his train of thought. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory, but I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell, but God know it. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell God knoweth. He, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory. Yet of myself, I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Yeah. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seemed me to be or that he heareth of me. I hope you can understand. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations. Uh -huh. It was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, he didn't say he would move it. He said, my grace Come on. is sufficient yeah. for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yeah. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches. In necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. I want to talk this morning from the topic, God is working through your weakness. God right. is working through your weakness. Amen. Let us bow this morning for a word of Prayer. God, I thank you for this opportunity. God, I thank you, God, for the platform. And I ask, God, that you would not let this time be wasted. But I pray, oh God, that as I stand, you would help me, God, to articulate the thoughts. Help me, God, to articulate the notes, oh God, that it would that it would land in such a way that it would bring understanding to your people and that it would bring a, a life to your to your people. Oh God, that it would give direction to your people. Let your word do all the many things your word is able and capable of doing. Yeah. I pray, God, that you would speak through me in such a way that your people would receive answers to prayers, that they would receive guidance. That you would impart thoughts. Amen. God, hear my prayer this morning, oh God. Speak to your people through me, God. I ask God that you would let your people receive this word, open their ears that they would hear, open, their, open up yes, their eyes God. that they would see, open their minds that they would understand. And then God make this word so strong that it would penetrate even the hardest of the hearts from now, even until anybody who would see it or watch it online, continue to let this word bless the people of God. In Jesus name, we say thank you and amen. amen. You may be seated. Amen. God is working through your weakness. God is working through your weakness. Uh, this is one uh, very familiar place, passage of scripture in the Bible. And uh, I don't know uh, about you, but uh, as I always say, many of, much of the time I always am looking for where I can learn lessons from the Bible. And it's more than just what is written. And so what you learn about the Apostle Paul, we know that Paul was one of the greatest writers of the New Testament. He wrote many of the books in the New Testament. Yeah. He started many of the churches in the New Testament. It was Paul's work to the Gentiles that actually caused Christianity to spread beyond Jerusalem and, and, and uh, uh, in the book of Acts. And so what we learned about Paul, we learned that Paul was a very significant person yeah. 
in the Bible. Amen. And God used him in a mighty way. Yet he had a thorn. Yet he had a thorn. And, 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 and it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me how, you know, uh, 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 I, I believe it shows <laughs> I believe it shows what humanity looks like in all of us. I believe it shows that on one hand, God can be using you very mightily. On one hand, you know that the spirit of God is working on you. You know you hear God's voice. You know there's a call and purpose on your life. But at the same time, he does not rid you of your humanity. I wish that when you came to God, that all of the things about God would suddenly overtake your mind and overtake your body and you no longer had to deal with the physical ailments that, uh, that regular people deal with. Right, I believe that I, 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 I'm, not, I, I'm not believing, but I wish that when you started to believe in Christ, that the things in your body would yeah, match yeah, the yeah. things in your spirit. Am I the only one where I, uh, sometimes I'd be thinking like, you know, I got a little limp today and, and it's just an, uh, a show that I'm still human. Yeah. No matter what God is doing through me, I'm still human. And I wish, I wish that the power of God would rest on me so that when I get a cut, the cut automatically healed by itself. Like Paul did when the snake bite me, he just threw it back into the fire. I wish, I wish that sometimes it would work like that. But it don't work like that. It don't work yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And I believe it shows the humanity of the Apostle Paul that you, it's possible to be on one hand be used by God, but then at the same time, you have to deal with your flesh. And I want to stress that this morning. I want to stress this morning that if you want to get to the things of the spirit, you're going to have to battle through the things in your flesh. Flesh, and you're going to have to struggle through some things in your flesh in order to get to the things of the spirit. And this is where we find the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul is dealing with something that he calls it a thorn. We don't know what the thorn is. So the thorn could be anything. It could be the thoughts and desires that come to your mind. It could be the feelings and the appetites that come to your body. It could be some sickness. It could be some ailment. It could be anything that you want it to be. And I'm glad that he left it as a thorn because the thorn can be whatever it needs to be in your life. But it shows that you can be used by God but still play by things in your body and it causes you to have some struggle and it's possible to operate in your gifts and in your talents but yet still have a struggle in your body and I don't know why God does that but maybe a possible explanation could be that it's just to show you that no matter how gifted you are no matter how talented you are you still need God to help you walk through some places in your life and I, I don't I don't know about you, but maybe it's possible. It's possible. One possible explanation is that with all your gifts and with all your talents, if you didn't have no struggles, you would think that you didn't need God. But the fact that you have some struggles, the fact that things are challenging, the fact that obstacles still come, it's a reminder that no matter how talented you are, no matter how called you are, no matter how spiritual you are, you still need God. I don't know about you, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And my obstacles that I can't overcome yeah, yeah, by myself, yeah. even though I'm gifted, I still struggle. Even though I'm called by God, I still have issues. Yeah. Even though I'm anointed by God and chosen, picked out by God, I still have some yeah, things. It's God's way of showing you, you still need you some Jesus. Yeah, I don't know yeah. about you. You may hit the gym. You may be in tip top physical condition, but God has a way of showing you that you ain't strong enough to handle some things in your life just to remind yeah. you that you still need yeah. them. I don't know. I don't know about you, but it's a reminder. It's a reminder that no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter how saved you are, no matter what your title is, yeah, you yeah. still need some Jesus. Amen. And, and I believe that that's an explanation. And, and he says what he says is, and that's why I backed up to verse number one, because it lets you know that God was doing something amazing in the Apostle Paul. He was giving him visions. He was giving him signs. He was able to see things that other people could not see. He was able to speak things that other people could not see and operate in the spirit at a place that other people could not operate. And sometimes when God has you way up, when God gives you so many successes, sometimes it has a way of going to your head. Sometimes when you see so much good in your life, it has a way of going to your head. When God gives you so many successes, in your life, it has a way of going to your head. And this is what Paul is saying. Lest 
I be exalted above measure. That he caught me up into the third heavens yeah, and I yeah. saw stuff that I can't tell you. He, he's done some things through me that I can't even speak of. Yeah. He's, he showed me some things that I can't share with you. But lest I be exalted above measure, yeah. I was given a thorn. It lets you know that Paul sees his struggle as God's way of keeping him humble. And I want you to get it. I want you to get it. That, that God will allow some things in your life to burden you. But it's not to break you, but it's to balance you. Uh -huh. Somebody need to get that. That too much of anything yeah. is bad for you. Yeah. I don't know about you, but somebody needs to understand this one word. Balance. That's yeah. why it takes sunshine and rain for the plant to grow. Uh -huh. It takes good and bad. It takes ups and downs for you to grow the right way. And Paul, he understands that the thorn was God's way of keeping him balanced. Yeah. That, that he can't give you too many successes without you having struggles. You can't, you can't see the mountain top all times. Sometimes you gotta go down in the valley so that you can stay balanced. And I want somebody to understand it, that while you're growing, God will give you goods, but he'll also allow some bad. He'll, yeah. he'll give you some ups, but he'll allow you to experience some downs so that you can grow balance so that while you growing your ego won't grow while you going up your arrogance won't go up but he'll he has a way ain't that funny how God has a way of keeping you grounded when, when God starts to bless you when things start to open up in your life there's always some things that you got to deal with and it's designed to keep your mind from tripping on yourself. That's why struggle is still in your life and God is still in your life. He's trying to help you to stay balanced so your ego don't get out of control. Yeah, I see your bank account, but you still got some struggles right through here and so you won't get arrogant and so your ego won't get too big for, I wish somebody would understand me this morning and he says, it's God's way of keeping me humble. So along with strengths, you have weaknesses. Along with ups, you have downs. And, and God does not want your pride and ego to grow. So he allows some things to challenge you. He allows some things to slow you down. He allows some obstacles that you don't immediately get victory over to keep you Balance. He does it so that you're balanced as you grow and develop. And he understands that the, the thorn was God's process of keeping him humble. It's possible. I need somebody to hear me this morning to misinterpret the process of God. It's, it's possible to misinterpret the process of God. And if you're not looking at it the right way, you would think that the thorn was a curse from God. But it was actually the process that God was using to keep Paul humble. It was the process. And, and I think it's a good example of God's process because as pretty as the rose is, if you touch the thorn, the thorn is going to hurt. It's, it's painful. And, and I want you to understand that if the thorn is a good example because sometimes God's methods can be painful, but his methods get you to where he wants you to be. His methods may be annoying sometimes, but it's the process that God is using. I want somebody to hear me. God's process may be annoying. It may be frustrating. At times it may be uncomfortable. Comfortable, but it's the process that gets you where God needs you to be so that you can stay usable by him. Maybe if you had the money that you thought that you, need, that you needed to have, you would have a lot of money, but you wouldn't be usable. You wouldn't be accessible, but God knows how. Ain't it, ain't it funny how God knows how to give you just enough and not enough to keep right where he can still get glory through uh yeah get glory through your life and, and sometimes God uses painful experiences as the process and, and you got to learn to stop complaining about what God is using to mature you. Stop complaining about what God is using to prune you. Stop complaining about what God is using to grow you. Stop complaining about what God is using to redirect you. Oftentimes what you're praying for God to move is the thing that God wants to use in your life. It's important that you learn to trust God's process until he reveals his purpose. Somebody needs to understand that you got to trust God's process.
process yeah. until he reveals his purpose. And it's going to be frustrating, but you got to trust God's process. It's, it's going to be annoying, but you got to trust God's process. You got to ask for patience while you deal with the thorns in your life. You got to ask for patience while you deal with the rough patches and people who in your life. He says, uh, uh, Lest I be exalted above measure, he asked him to move it. He gave me a thorn in the flesh, and he's like many of us. We ask God to move it. God, the mountain is too high. I know I got faith enough to speak to it, and you'll move it. And here's my testimony that God didn't move the mountain for me because sometimes God want to give you strength to climb it. And he yeah, says, yeah, God, yeah. I want you to move it. That's many of us. God, move this issue. Move this person. Move this struggle. Bless me like I need to be blessed. Do what I need you to do in my life so I don't have to see this chapter yeah, of my yeah. life. He asked God to move it. And we shout when God moves the mountain. We shout when the miracle yeah, happens. Yeah. We shout when the healing comes. We shout when God do what we want him to do. But he don't do that for Brother Paul. And I like it that, that Paul is connected to God. We see Paul doing some things in the spirit yeah. that we don't see other people doing in the Bible. We see Paul moving in a place. And he and it would seem like if he's that close to God, that anytime he needs anything yeah. done, that God would just make it happen. But I like that. God, he says, my grace is woo, my grace is sufficient. Yes, is. I'm not going to move it, but my grace is sufficient. I'm not going to move I'm not gonna move the issue yeah, because yeah. my grace is sufficient to keep you while you deal. Oh, yeah, that's a hard, yeah, that's yeah, a hard yeah. one right there. He says, I'm not going to move it because my grace is sufficient to keep you while you're in it. And and God knows sometimes I, I want somebody to hear me that sometimes God he tells you no, and, and the no is for the purpose. We understand the purpose, but when God says no, sometimes we get mad at God and we yeah. backslide. We get mad at God and we start doing our own thing because he didn't give what we wanted him to yeah, give yeah. to us. And I like that. I like that he says to Paul, Paul, I'm not going to move it, but my grace is so I'm not going to remove it, but my grace is sufficient. And I like that sometimes God's no's have more impact yeah. on your life than God's yes. He'll say no, and it'll make you think different. He'll say no, and it'll make you change your direction. Oh. He'll say no, and it may hurt when he says no, but what? the no had more impact on your life than yeah, had he yeah, given. Yeah. Have you ever been there where you ask God for something? And he gave you exactly what you asked. Yeah, and yeah. you realize what you asked for is not what you really, come on, what you really wanted. And sometimes you ask God for something and he doesn't give it oh, to you. No. And you realize that that was the right thing because that no led to yeah. his yes. And, and this is what I want somebody to understand this morning. That, that God, he says, I'm not going to move it, but I'm not going to move it because I'm going to use yeah. it in your yeah. life. And I need somebody to understand that this morning. And maybe what you're praying about that God wants, that you want God to move, God wants to use yeah, in your yeah. life. Maybe the struggle that you're trying to pray away is the struggle that God is going to use in your life. The issue that you've been praying away is the issue that God is going to use oh. in your life. I never understood why God didn't make some things easier in my life. I yeah, didn't understand yeah, yeah. why God didn't put my strengths on display at certain points in my life. And I didn't understand it. He didn't move it because he wanted to use it. He wanted everybody to see you at your worst. He wanted yeah. everybody to see you in your weakness. And this is what he said. My strength is yeah. made perfect uh, in yeah. your weakness. And, and it's understanding. He says to Paul, he says, Paul, I know I've done some things for you. I've blessed you to see some things that nobody else has seen. I've lifted you up and I've blessed people uh, through you. But I, I want you to understand this. Uh, my strength is not going to be seen in your strength. I need somebody to get it. His strength can't be seen in places that you're comfortable in. His yeah. strength can't be seen in scenarios that you under control. His strength can't be seen when you have, come on, somebody needs, I wish you would understand oh, me this God. morning. His strength can't be seen when you on your, when you, when you at your best, but his strength is seen when you should be falling apart yeah. and, and some kind of way you kept it together. His strength is seen when you run out of strength and when you run out of energy and you at your wits end, that's when God gets glory. When all things happen and you don't have no answers for it, that's when God, I need somebody to hear me, when you're frustrated and you go, you, you about to go there 
share with somebody and that's when God gets glory when you, when you endure a situation for longer than you thought you would have to endure it and you still standing in it what caused other people to fall that's when God gets glory and I need somebody to understand that God don't want to he don't want to put your strengths on display but he want to put your weaknesses on display how things that destroy people before it got to you but when it got to you, it made you weak, but it didn't kill you. I need somebody to hear me. And this is what Paul is saying. He said that God said to him, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. That he wants to get glory. And the only way that you know that God was in Abraham's story is because Abraham was too old to have a baby and Sarah was barren. And they were both too old to have kids. But And this is why I got to give God some thanks because God... He he don't wait uh, and do it while I can do it. He don't give me the strength to do it, but he lets my strength fail sometimes. He says to Gideon, Gideon, you got 10,000, but you got too many. Why? Because I'm not going to put myself on display behind you, but I'm going to let the people see that when you ain't got enough, I'm God enough. I need somebody to hear me. When you ain't got enough, I'm God enough. I'm, I'm going to break your 10,000 down to 300. So, so when you get victory, you can say it was your numbers. You can't say it was your strength. You can't say it was nobody whoa, but the almighty God. And that's what I love about it. He says my strength is made perfect in your human weakness. And that's why I got to give God some thanks. I got to give God some praise every now and then because I know it wasn't my mind that got me through it. I know it wasn't my experience that brought me through. I know it wasn't my money that brought me through. Not my friends or my connections that brought me through. Because if truth be told, I should have been dead and gone a long time ago. I should have been in jail a long time ago. I should have went crazy a long time ago. But God's strength was made perfect in my human weakness. And when I look back on it, I, I want somebody to hear me. When I look back on it, I can say, I know that God had his hand woo, in my life. Because I, I lost it more times than you saw me lose it. I, I was broke more times than you saw me broken. I was hurt more times than you saw me hurt. But his strength, my God, was made perfect uh, in my human weakness. And, he, and this is what he said. He says, uh, my God grace is sufficient. Yeah, I need somebody to hear me when I say that my grace is sufficient. He says my grace, Paul, I don't have to move it, but I'll give you the grace to deal with it. And grace is a difficult thing because I know when somebody's behind me pushing me. I know yeah, yeah. when I'm falling, somebody catches me. I know when somebody's holding me up, but, but grace don't work like that. I don't feel yeah, yeah, grace yeah. when grace is working. I don't I don't feel grace. Somebody need to hear Come me this on. morning. I don't, I don't feel grace. So he said my grace is sufficient. I don't feel your grace though God. I feel the gravity of my situation. I feel this thing pulling me down. I don't feel your grace. I feel pain. I don't feel your grace. I feel sadness. I don't feel grace. I feel loneliness. I don't feel your grace. I don't see it either. I don't know. I don't know who, who can be real with me in here but he says my grace is sufficient but it's hard because I don't, I don't see grace. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. feel grace while I'm standing in grace. And this is why I want to encourage somebody. You don't know it, but you're standing in the grace of God right now. You can't yeah. see it, but you're standing in the grace of God right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You don't feel it, but God is holding you up uh, in his grace. And, yeah. and I like it because you don't see grace. You see and feel the gravity of your situation. But, but here's what I like about it. That sometimes you don't recognize his grace until you get up the road. I want you yeah, to hear me that you don't see grace. You don't feel grace while you're standing in grace. You recognize grace once you come out of grace. And, and you look back at it and you say, good God Almighty, I shouldn't have made it out of that. But I made it by the grace of God. I, I shouldn't have came out alive, but I made it by woo, the grace of God. And, and that's my testimony this morning. I, I didn't come out because I was strong, but, but I came out by the grace of God. I didn't come out bank account, but I came out woo, by the grace of God, and I look back at it and I say, if it had not been for the grace of God, I would have I would have killed somebody. I would have killed myself had it not been for woo, the grace of God. My grace is sufficient. You ain't going to recognize it until you come out and you realize uh, that it should have turned out a different way. Did everybody else they experienced it. They came out crazy. They came out paralyzed. They came out broken. They came out disturbed. They came out with their mind messed up. But now you realize. 
realize you on the other side and you still got all your brains. You still got all your limbs. You still standing. And you look back and you say, I know I was nothing but the grace. I was nothing but the grace of God. The reason why I'm standing, he says, my grace is sufficient. He don't tell you you ain't going to see it. He don't tell you you ain't going to feel my grace. But when you come out, you're going to look back and say, I see that it was nothing but the grace of God when I look at where God has brought me from. And if you would just look over your life, what God has brought you from, you know it had to be the grace of uh, the grace of God. And he says, he says, uh, he says, my grace is sufficient. Therefore, I glory in my infirmities. And I had to learn this. I had to learn that as long as as I'm telling people about the things that I can do, that's Marcus getting glory for himself. I, I want you to hear me. I, I got from one weight at the gym to the next weight, and I went from that weight to the next weight, and I tell people, now my weight is such and such. That's the glory that Marcus yeah, wants to bring yeah. on himself. But Brother Paul, he said, I don't want to boast about my strengths because no, if no, my no. strengths are on display, then God's strengths are, uh, I need somebody to catch it. But, but he said, I boast about my infirmities. I boast about my weaknesses. I boast about the things I'm not good at and God makes me look good while I do them. Somebody needs to hear me this morning. That I boast about the struggles that I have but God makes it look easy. I boast about the places in my life that I don't know how to go and God gives me direction. I boast about the things I don't have the answer to but God directs me. I need somebody to hear me. I don't boast about knowing it all but I boast about my weaknesses because when and my weakness is there. That's when you see God is strong. Yeah, and I yeah. want somebody to hear me. God is working in the midst, not of the good that you do, but, but in the sweet points, in the struggles that you have. He, he's working in the, the weaknesses that you have because when you are weak, yeah. uh, that's when God is strong. Come that's on. when God is strong. And this is what Paul is saying. He said, I boast about my infirmities. I boast about the stuff I'm not good at so that you can see that God God, uh, this is what we say. Uh, uh, God is good not some of the time, but but all the time. And, uh, and when I'm weak, that's when you can see that God uh, is good. Yeah, when I'm not yeah. doing so well, that's when you can see that God is good. And, and sometimes people try to take the credit, but in reality, we all got to give God some yeah, praise yeah. because there were weak points in your life that you didn't break. There were weak points in your life that you bend it, but, uh, but you didn't fold. And you got to give God some praise, not for the things that you were strong in, but in the midst of your weakness, he still uh, showed yeah, his yeah. strength. And, and this is what he said, the outcome uh, is the evidence that God was with you. Your limitation makes God's power evident in your life. Because it was, if it was you, it would just be you. But because yeah, yeah, you know yeah. it couldn't have been you, you got to give God his praise. Come on, let's give God a yeah. hand of praise this morning. God is working through your weaknesses. Let's stand this morning and go to God. Thank you so much for watching or if you're listening, I want to say thank you as well. Never miss a Bible study or a sermon when you subscribe and if you're on YouTube, tap the bell so you never miss when I post.